The Wise Mothman is probably one of the most powerful mill commanders in EDH, if not the most, just because of what it represents, the angles you can take, the counters, the proliferation, the rad, the mill, whatever it might be, go wide or you can mill yourself and this commander does it all. Adding green to the Demir space of mill is also really powerful in terms of the options that you have. And with last week's video, just going over the stock deck list and talking about the best cards out of the box, I wanted to take a moment in this video and go over the upgrades that you have. We're going to go over five general categories that I think you can build towards, add or lose. And I'm going to leave what to take out to you because I generally don't like telling people what to take out and what not to because I think everyone has their personal preference. But these are cards that you definitely want to try and synergize and build around too. So before getting too far into it, let's read the Wise Mothman on the screen right now. One black, green and blue. The Wise Mothman is a 3-3 legendary creature insect mutant with flying that says whenever the Wise Mothman enters the battlefield or attacks, each player gets a ride counter. And whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, put a 1-1 counter on each of up to X target creatures where X is the number of non-land cards milled this way. So if you mill three non-land cards, you can put uh, three 1-1 one -one counter. You can put 1-1 one -one counters on three creatures. Sorry. It helps you build wide. It buffs up your board. So you do want to have a board while also milling. And the rad counters themselves are also really interesting. So at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, and you're going to read this as your opponent, as yourself, everyone's going to be getting rad counters in this deck. If you have any rad counters, mill that many cards. If you have five rad counters, you mill five cards. If you have three rad counters, you mill three cards. For each non-land card milled this way, you lose one life and a rad counter. If you have any rad counters, you mill that many cards. So if you mill five cards, but you only mill two non-land cards, well then great, you're only going to lose two rad counters and you're going to keep doing that over and over again. So the rad counters can just stay on your opponent, which is a really cool piece that I didn't even really think about up until this point making this video. But especially against those land heavy decks, I know your pods have them where the opponent's playing like, you know, 40, 50 lands and they're just ramping into well guess what rad counters are really going to take advantage of a deck like that but it presents a life loss angle it presents a continuous mill angle it presents a proliferation angle that you can take advantage of with your commander out on the battlefield so let's hop right into it with the first card that i want to talk about and that's going to be straight up not even a category just a dc brew tyrant i think this card represents the zombie go wide strategy in this deck so Sadisi brew tyrant is one black green blue so same cost as the uh, mothman legendary creature naga shaman three three that says whenever Sidisi enters the battlefield or attacks mill three cards so great you can do some flickering you can do some combat whenever one or more creature cards are put into a graveyard from your library so it doesn't affect what your opponent's doing just you create a 2-2 black zombie creature token and that's so fantastic because you're going to be building a wide board that your mothman can then buff up and then you're going to be able to take advantage of it with cards that already exist in the deck what about card like jason bright blowing profit one blue and two for a three mana two three legendary creature zombie mutant advisor that says whenever a zombie or a mutant you control dies if it's power was different from its base power draw a card so if you're going to be able to buff them up you're going to be drawing some cards then it says come fly with me to sacrifice a creature it could be your zombie tokens put a 1-1 one -one counter on a target creature you control against flying until end of turn so this is going to be a great way to maybe buff up your sadisi to swing in for some combat put a 1-1 one -one counter on another zombie your zombies are going to be able to work for you and what's nice about this ability you don't need to tap jason at all if you have a bunch of mana which we're going to talk about later you're going to be able to take advantage of it immediately what about another zombie help card like hancock ghoulish mayor black and two for a three mana two one legendary creature zombie mutant advisor each other creature you control that's a zombie or mutant gets plus x plus x where x is the number of counters on hancock ghoulish mare and it has undying so each other creature plus x plus x number of counters on hancock you're going to be putting counters on hancock and then your other zombies are just going to be buffed from there which is going to be great in addition to the jason bright that i just mentioned being able to then draw cards if those zombies die so these cards are going to work great together in tandem on the battlefield and just going to be great synergy for your zombie horde and the final card that's going to be new to help with the Sadisi is Undead Alchemist. Blue and three for a creature zombie four two. If a zombie you control would deal combat damage to a player, instead that player mills that many cards. The red counters are going to be dealing damage to them, but you're going to be milling them with this combat damage. And whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from their library, exile that card and create a two two black zombie creature token. So now this is the perfect analogous piece to Sadisi. Undead Alchemist is going to be creating zombies from your opponent's graveyard. Sadisi is going to be creating zombies from your graveyard. And so you're going to have this tandem creating this huge massive board of creatures that are going to be big they're going to attack in with alchemists they're going to be milling it just works with itself as well there's just so much synergy happening in the zombie plan these are two very good additions to your mill deck now the next card that i want to talk about is related or the next couple of cards is going to be related to card draw in the deck first and foremost a modern mill staple visions of beyond the, the card draw in this deck is a little lacking and i think you can definitely like optimize some of the options that you have and visions of beyond is going to be a great way to do this if a graveyard has 20 or more cards in it draw three cards instead otherwise you would just draw a card so it's 
one in blue for an instant and that's what it does so it can cantrip most of the time your opponent's going to have or you might have a large graveyard it's just ancestral you're drawing three cards this is pretty good you should just be playing generically good draw spells to take advantage of that what about jace the perfected mind another card that's going to be able to control parts of the board definitely much better in a 1v1 scenario but just having that minus two target player mills three cards then if a graveyard a graveyard has 20 or more draw three cards otherwise draw one it's literally the visions of beyond effect just take advantage of it as much card draw as you can you're going to need as many resources as possible because your opponent's going to be trying to stop you wiping your board you want to refill you want to mill more all this type of stuff the last card that i want to mention is forbidden alchemy and this is kind of a two-pronged one where you want to th this isn't really card draw but it's like card advantage because you're going to be putting cards into your graveyard this is a great way to feed that and find more flashback spells take advantage of these flashback spells this is going to allow you to put a card into your hand put the rest in your graveyard flash it back maybe you have other flashback spells that you're just going to be able to put in there use it again later retrace cards that allow you to discard lands or use them again like stuff like this is going to be fantastic in any graveyard strategy take advantage of cards like forbidden alchemy feeding your graveyard and grabbing you cards the next category of things that i want to talk about is mana related creating more mana in a mill deck in soul tide now you could do something simple like the far wandering now far wanderings green and two for a sorcery search your library for a basic land card put that card onto the battlefield tap then shuffle your library but it has threshold so you can just pay three mana and tutor for a basic but with threshold if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard pretty damn easy to do instead search your library for up to three basic land cards put them on the battlefield tap then shuffle you literally pay three mana on turn three let's say you have through seven cards in your graveyard somehow turn three might be a little ridiculous but you are gonna untap with so much more mana than your opponent and more mana leads to winning games much faster casting more spells doing more on your turn is a key way threshold is going to be one of the best ways to take advantage of milling in your own deck far wanderings is just an inkling what you can do just in the ramp shell next up is a card like calling ritual which is honestly a pretty low key card in these colors so two black and and green for a four mana sorcery destroy each non-land permanent with a a mana value of two or less add green or black for each permanent destroyed this way this card is absolutely insane with the onset of treasures everywhere in commander imagine your opponent has a bunch of treasures a bunch of mana rocks kill them all create your own mana play your mothman play this play that play all of this you are this is just a ramp spell that also answers your opponent's stuff that is insane next card is going to be titan's nest this is the one i i love this card one green blue and black for titan's nest an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep look at the top card of your library you may put that card into your graveyard so okay that's a simple little feeding your own graveyard but the second activated ability is what's key exile a card from your graveyard add a colorless mana spend this mana only to cast colored spells without x in its mana cost now this is a little counter synergistic with probably one of the better spells in this color you know villainous wealth <laughs> green blue black and x was for, for a sorcery that says target opponent exiles the top x cards in the library you may cast any number of spells with mana value x or less from among them without paying their mana cost villainous wealth you're probably just generically playing in any salt Tide deck i'm gonna be honest you're probably playing it in this deck you can't take advantage of it with titan's nest right because it has to be without x in its mana cost but the colorless mana is going to be great for casting so many things like your other colorless spells that you're going to be playing and the next category that i want to talk about is around reanimation spells it's going to be so key to reanimate what your opponent is doing yes you are dealing damage to them you're milling them they're losing cards but they ultimately might be mill decks themselves they might be able to take advantage of those cards before you do you need to stop that you need to reanimate you need to take those cards from them and from your own graveyard because your graveyard should also be an extension of your hand if you're going to be milling yourself next up is out of tombs this is from the warhammer 40k set black and two for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep put two eon counters on out of tombs then mill cards equal to the number of counters on it if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it instead you would re you return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield if you can't do that you lose the game so this is another way to prevent you from losing the game in the late game but maybe you got a little too trigger happy milled yourself out you just have out of tombs out you, you just keep returning cards from your graveyard to your battlefield fantastic that's great reanimation spells that's exactly what you want maybe you return a creature that can shuffle some cards back in Free reanimation has multiple purposes in it. Also continues to mill yourself for other cards that, you, that we already mentioned. Come on, no brainer. Next up is going to be just that all encompassing idea where I, honestly, there could be plenty of other cards that I mentioned here, but Rise of the Dark Realms, Black, Black and Seven for a Sorcery, put all creature cards from all graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. So again, so many other cards that I could be mentioning in place of this card, but really this is the card that does it all. Uh, you know, we recently got a printing out of Murders at Karlov Manor. It is a relatively expensive card, but I really wanted to mention this because again, that reprint recently 
recently has shot down the price a little bit. So definitely more accessible of a card right now. Play this just with all that mana that you're creating with the other mana spells that we mentioned. Return everything, create a massive board and tell your opponent, have an answer or you're cooked. In the last category, I want to talk about some soft ways to enable rad counters. There's different ways to take this, right? Rad could be anything in the sense that firstly, they're taking some damage. So let's talk about mind crank. A simple two mana artifact that says whenever an opponent loses life, that player mills that many cards. So now we are doubling the amount of mill that we get out of rad counters. Rad counters are now doubled up. No brainer. This card, easy include in this deck. Fantastic. And, and you would, it does not affect you. Your opponents are going to be milling more than you do. Next up is Tezzeret's Gambit to proliferate the rad counters, especially against decks that are going to be playing a bunch of lands. They're still going to have rad counters left over. Proliferate those rad counters. Tezzeret's Gambit is nice because of the Phyrexian mana. It's technically colorless. It's free. You're, you know, in a three color deck, maybe you're playing a budget land base. This is going to be a great way to pay for a card like this. Draw two cards, then proliferate. It's drawing you cards. It's helping you with your rad. Tezzeret's Gambit is a no brainer, but I wanted to bounce off the proliferate. I think a sneaky way that you can take advantage of rad on the side is using cards like prologue to phyresis blue and one for an instant that says each opponent gets a poison counter draw a card now everyone's gonna hate you for this i fully i will completely admit that everyone is gonna hate you for playing this card but if you have proliferate cards in your deck if you have ways to increase the amount of rad counters they probably increase the amount of poison counters so this is why i love this deck because of the angles that it plays you tell your opponent okay you can lose to milling i can win by milling myself you can lose to life loss on the zombies or i can give you poison counters and we can proliferate those there are so many ways that you can take this deck and I love the fact that you have all of these alternative plans like Infect, like the Rad Counters, like Milling, like Milling yourself, like playing to a board and swinging into your opponents. There are so many ways. And that is what I think makes the Mothman a diverse and really powerful, just option heavy mill deck in EDH. And I think it, it will slowly take over as the best kind of almost Sultai commander. I mean, hey, maybe it won't be on Muldrotha and everything, but regardless, mill commander in general i think this is the next big mill commander out there this is definitely going to revolutionize the game and i'm so excited for it let me know what you think about the cards in the comment section down below let me know if there's any cards that you're particularly excited for to try out in this deck i'd love to hear your thoughts down below because as i build it i'd love to get some of your ideas and eventually when i have it all together i'd love to share the deck list and uh, get some of that going as well but if you like this video leave a like on it and if you want to see more mill content and as well some edh content around mill coming in the future subscribe to the channel for much more